Now I'll be discussing some important locus and the first one is mod of z minus z1 upon z minus z2 it is equal to k. Now we already know that if this k is equal to 1 then it will represent perpendicular bisector of z1 and z2 and if this k is unequal to 1 then in that case it will represent a circle provided coefficient of z in the numerator and denominator it must be 1. Now say for example we need to find locus of z such that z minus 5 iota upon z plus 5 iota it is equal to 1. Now coefficient of z here is 1 and the value of k is 1. So that means this z it will be perpendicular bisector of 5 iota and minus 5 iota. Now perpendicular bisector of 5 iota and minus 5 iota is nothing but real axis. So this z it lies on real axis. Another example could be this z plus iota upon z minus iota equals 2. Now in this case value of k is 2 that means this z it will lie on a circle. Now there could be cases where we have this 3z plus 1 upon 2z minus iota equals 1.5. Now here coefficient of z is not 1. So what we'll do is we'll take 3 and 2 common from numerator and denominator. So we can write 3 by 2 and then now we'll have mod of z plus 1 by 3 upon z minus iota by 2 and it'll be equal to 1.5. So this 1.5 and 1.5 will cancel. Now we can write mod of z plus 1 by 3 upon z minus iota by 2 is equal to 1 and since coefficient of z in the numerator and denominator is 1 and this right hand side is 1 so this z it will lie on a straight line. So locus of z is the straight line which is perpendicular bisector of iota by 2 and minus 1 by 3. Now the second important locus again we have discussed it in circle and it is mod of z minus z0 equals r mod of z minus z0 is less than equal to r and mod of z minus z0 greater than or equal to r. In the first case it will represent points on the circle with center z0 and radius r. In the second case it will represent points on and inside the circle with center at z0 and radius r and for this third case it will represent points on and outside the circle with center z0 and radius r. Now we have a strict inequality say mod of z minus z0 will be less than r then will be simply points lying inside the circle and not on the circle. So in that case, we'll draw this circle as a dotted circle. So it'll be simply points lying inside the circle with center z not m radius r. And in the same way, we can write it for mod of z minus z not is greater than r. So again, we won't include points on the circle. So it'll be this dotted circle center z not radius r and it'll be simply points line outside this circle. So that's our second important locus. Now this third important locus is argument of z minus z1 upon z minus z2 it is equal to alpha. So if alpha is 0 or pi then z lies on a straight line. 
Now, if we examine it more closely, then suppose we have two points, say Z1 and Z2, and we take this point in between this line segment AB, then angle between this vector which is Z minus Z1 and this vector which is Z minus Z2 will be pi. So if we write argument of Z minus Z1 upon Z minus Z2, it is pi, then this Z, it will lie on line segment AB. So I'll represent all the points which lies between A and B. Now if Z lies outside AB, now say Z is here, then this is Z minus Z1 and this is Z minus Z2. So that means if argument of Z minus Z1 upon Z minus Z2, it is equal to zero, then Z will lie on this line AB except for the points lying between A and B. Even if we take this Z here, then again, this is Z minus Z1 and Z minus Z2. So if it is pi, it will represent all the points in between AB. And if it is equal to zero, then it will represent all the points on this line, except the points between A and B. Now the second case, when argument of Z minus Z1 upon Z minus Z2 is plus or minus pi by 2. That means angle between AP and BP is always 90 degrees. So if we take this circle whose diameter is AB and this is Z1 and this is Z2. Now we take any point on the circle say Z. Now this is Z minus Z1 and this is Z minus Z2. Using rotation of vectors we can say we have rotated AP to form BP. We can write Z minus Z2 upon Z minus Z1 will be equal to AP upon BP into e to the power iota pi by 2 that is argument of Z minus Z2 upon Z minus Z1 will be pi by 2. Now if we take this point Z here then This is Z minus Z1 and now this is Z minus Z2. Now we have rotated Z minus Z2 to form Z minus Z1. In this case, argument of Z minus Z1 upon Z minus Z2 will be pi by 2 or we can write argument of Z minus Z2 upon Z minus Z1 will be minus pi by 2. So if we take only pi by 2, then it will represent this semicircle which lies below AB. And if we take minus pi by 2, if we take this minus sign here, then it will represent the semicircle which lies above AB. And if we take both plus or minus pi by 2, then in that case, it represent this circle. And third one is obviously for any general angle, which is argument of Z minus Z1 upon Z minus Z2, it is equal to alpha. So in that case, it represent portion of a circle having chord Z1, Z2, where angle in the segment is alpha. So this third case will represent portion of a circle and not the complete circle. Now the fourth locus is in terms of argument. So suppose you have argument of Z 
and say this is alpha. So that means we are talking about all the complex numbers z having argument alpha. So what we'll do is we'll draw this line making an angle alpha with positive real axis. So any point on this ray except zero it will have its argument as alpha. So argument z equals to alpha will represent this ray passing through origin at an angle alpha moving away from it. Now more general case will be argument of z minus z naught equals alpha. Now in this case what we'll do is we'll first locate this z naught. So suppose this point is z naught then angle of z from z naught is alpha. So all we need to do is we just need to draw a ray from z naught at an angle alpha with this horizontal line. So this is when argument of z minus z naught is alpha. Now we have any general case say mod of argument of z plus 1 is less than or equal to pi by 4. Now we can write this as minus pi by 4 will be less than or equal to argument of z plus 1 will be less than or equal to pi by 4. Now standard form is z minus z naught. So we have to write it as minus pi by 4 is less than equal to argument of z minus of minus 1 is less than or equal to pi by 4. So we have to draw the angles from this minus 1. So first we'll look at minus 1. So we have this argument plane and this point is minus 1. Now we have to find all the complex number z such that its angle will lie between minus pi by 4 and plus pi by 4. So we'll draw these two lines 1 at pi by 4 and 1 at minus pi by 4. So this z it will lie on this region in between these two lines. So that's our fourth locus. When we have this straight line passing through two points A and B where A is Z1 and B is Z2. Now we'll consider two cases when Z lies between AB Now in this case, PA plus PB, it must be equal to AB. So if we have any condition where we are given that mod of Z minus Z1 plus mod of Z minus Z2, it is equal to Z1 minus Z2, then this Z, it will lie on line segment AB. So it won't represent this complete line. It will just represent this line segment AB. Now another way to write it is in terms of its argument. Now this is Z minus Z1 and this is Z minus Z2. So if we write argument of Z minus Z1 upon Z minus Z2, it is pi. Then also this Z, it will lie on this line segment AB. Now this second case when Z lies on line passing through AB except points between A and B. So now suppose we have this Z here. Now this is AP and this is BP. So if the condition is AP minus BP mod of it and it is equal to AB, then this Z will lie on this line AB except for the points between A and B. So we can write this condition as mod of mod of Z minus Z1 minus mod of Z minus Z2 and it is equal to mod of Z1 minus Z2. In that case, this Z, it will lie on these two rays, one through this B and the other through this point A. Another way to write it is 
in terms of argument argument of z minus z1 upon z minus z2 it is zero so that's our fifth locus